are robot lawnmowers worth it yet? Now, when you think of a robot lawnmower, you might be thinking of those ones from about 10 years ago that were loud, clunky, and cumbersome. But like many electronics, they have come a long way in the last couple years. They're now much quieter and much more convenient, but there's still some things that they can't do. By the end of this video, I'm sure some of you will have ordered one immediately and then others will know to avoid these entirely. And I'll help you work out which of these two camps you fall in. While researching this video, I got in contact with Anthbot, who sent me out this unit to demo to be able to make this video. And if you do end up deciding to get a robot lawnmower, add them to the consideration list because they have decided to support the channel and bring you this video. Now let's dig in. In economics, there is a term called an experiential good a product that you purchase, but you can't determine the value of until you experience it firsthand. Things like restaurants, concert tickets, a day out at the theme park. And I would actually put robot lawnmowers into more of this category of good instead of a gadget or an appliance. Let me explain why. Now at this point, a lot of us own robot vacuums. And as soon as you've gotten one and realized how much time they save you and how much cleaner they make your house, you've probably started looking at other pieces of technology that might be able to fulfill a similar role in different chores around the house. One of which might've been a robot vacuum. And if you looked at one about 10 years ago, they were very not attractive. They were very expensive, all about $5,000 plus. And the only way that you could get them to not go into other parts of your garden beds, like a rose garden or your veggie patch, is you had to painstakingly walk around the borders of your yard and hammer in a steel cable so that when the lawnmower runs over that, it can sense it and then turn around. Just very inconvenient. But now you can get robot lawnmowers that are about 20% of the price of that that work off GPS, cameras and sensors to avoid objects, work out where the borders of your yard are, and then not run into your veggie patch. For this model, when you first get it out of the box, you need to set up a base station for it to have somewhere to sit and charge. You will need to obviously plug this into a wall charger somewhere. Thankfully, my house has a fair few outdoor sockets. And then what you do to show it the borders of your yard or the borders of your yard that you want it to mow is the app that you download for it turns into a remote control and you drive it around like a remote control car showing it the borders of your yard. You do one lap and then it knows the areas where to stay within. And in my experience, it hasn't gone outside those initial borders that I've drawn at all. The GPS hasn't drifted or anything. In fact, sometimes it does do the opposite a bit where it senses that there's an edge there and will only mow about a foot or so away from that edge. But I'll talk more about that later. And if your yard is like mine, where you don't just have one singular patch of grass, we have a couple bits separated by some footpaths. They've thankfully designed what is probably my favorite feature of this particular model, which is where you get to set up different parts of your yard as zones, where you can ask the robot to mow everything or only one zone at a time. And then you can set up those different zones with different parameters, say like different cutting heights. And similar to drawing borders, you also tell it which part of the path to cross so that you can make sure that that's always free. And my tip is to make sure that that path that you're crossing is really level because when I first drew mine out, I did it over a very bumpy part of my footpath onto my grass and I had to redo the border. One of the ways I've found this is particularly useful is I've set my front yard as a separate zone so that I can, when I want to, open my side gates and then hit mow that so that I know that it's going out there while the gates are open and I can also keep an eye on it that no one pinches my lawnmower. Thankfully, if someone does, it does have some security features, but I'm sure it'll never come to that. Now, next, during the first use, one of the things that blew me away the most was how quiet it is. This is really quiet. I will put a comparison here of this running compared to a normal electric lawnmower, which is already much quieter than a petrol one. And the reason that I can do this is the way that the cutting deck works is separate to the way that a typical lawnmower cutting deck blade system works. Whereas with a normal lawnmower, even with the blades as sharp as you can get them, they only get about as sharp as a table knife. But you compare that with one of these robot lawnmowers and they actually have multiple almost razor blades on the bottom that leaves a very fine cut on the grass. And a couple of years ago, I went through a big lawn care phase where I tried to make my lawn look like a golf course and I even bought the full real cylindrical mower and, and even the quality of cut that I get from that cylindrical mower is very comparable to this. It's just such a fine cut. Which brings me to one of your main questions might be, well, how does it dispose of the grass? Does it just leave it on top? And the short answer is yes, but because it's chopping it up so fine, 
you honestly don't even notice that the grass has been mowed and left on top. It's not like mulching with a conventional mower. But one of the reasons that this works like this is one of the drawbacks is that it can only cut below a certain height. For this model, it's 70 millimeters. So if your grass is quite overgrown, you will need to get just a conventional push mower, mow it all once before the robot lawn mower can take over. But then once it's at that max height, you can then use the robot lawn mower to do multiple passes to slowly take it down to the minimum height, which of this is 30 millimeters, which is pretty low if you know your mowers. Anthbot do recommend not taking off more than 25 millimeters at a time just to make sure that the bot itself isn't having to cut through too much grass. But because it's all automated, you can just do multiple passes in a day and it gets it down very quickly. And in my experience, how long it takes to mow a reasonably sized lawn, this particular patch is about 120 square meters or so, and it does that in about 40 minutes. So even though it seems to be moving slow, it actually gets the job done pretty quickly. Now what happens if you leave out a toy or a ball or a garden tool? Well, thankfully it does have object avoidance built in. And if you're like me with a very playful dog, you will sometimes walk out and there will be a tennis ball in the middle of your yard with some really nicely mown lines around it. Something interesting I have noticed about it, in, especially in the first couple cuts that I first did with it, is when there were some longer tufts of grass in the middle of the yard, it also avoided those like they were objects, but I guess that shows the object avoidance did work. It was just annoying that I then had to go out and mow it down. Now for when it mows, similar to a robot vacuum, you have the options of either setting it at an auto time, say 11 a.m. every day, or you can just hit start on the app whenever you want. I personally don't use the auto time feature so that I can make sure that the grass is all clear from objects and toys and tools before I'm turning it on so that I'm not risking any issues. But if you are running it on auto timer, you might wonder what happens if it rains. Interestingly, even though this does connect to the internet and it doesn't check weather patterns, it actually has a sensor built into the top that will detect when it has rained or if it's going to rain soon so that it makes sure to not mow within three hours after rain or if rain is expected. Of course, if you've checked the weather yourself, you can just override it. But that was a feature that surprised me the first time that I ran into it, which like a normal lawnmower, you just don't want to use it when the grass is wet because it's just too much work for it. Now, important to mention, one of the things that it doesn't do is edges. If you own one of these, you still need to expect that you are going to spend time looking after the edges of your garden, probably with a whipper snipper too get both what's close to walls as well as what's close to footpaths. How does it go with the battery life? Well, as it turns out, the one that I got is actually a fair bit overkill for my size yard. After doing absolutely everything, it ends up at about 55% battery. So I probably ordered one model too large. Because with the Anthbot Genies in particular, the differences between models is essentially just the battery size and they name it after the size yard that they recommend. And I've got the thousand square meter one, which is less than half of what my yard is, so. There is no problem there. In fact, I usually get it to go over my yard twice and I'll talk about why later. All right, let's talk about some of my nitpicks or things that I don't like about these. The first one is that even though I have drawn out the borders of my yard, anytime it's getting close to a wall is it will usually keep 30 to 50 centimeters away from that, even though I have drawn the border really close to the edges. It doesn't like mowing near walls. And I believe this is by design so that it doesn't lose GPS signal or just again, as part of that automatic object avoidance. The next thing is that the base station is meant to be a couple meters away from being undercover. Mine is actually set up directly next to my garage. I haven't really had many issues with that, but just know that the recommendation is to have it a couple meters away from a nearest wall, which can be a little bit awkward to put somewhere in your yard especially if you're like me and your goal is to pretty much have it tucked away invisible in a corner. The next one is similar to every robot vacuum that I have ever used is it just gets lost or stuck sometimes and you need to bring it back to the base station so that it knows where it is again. One improvement I personally would love to see is that once you drag it back to the base station, just have it pick up that same mo from however much progress I got through it. Because at the moment you can only just restart the whole thing again. So it will go over the part of the yard that it's just mowed and then continue on with anything that it missed. The next one is something that hasn't been an issue lately, but in the first two to four mows that I first did in my yard, something that happened a fair bit is as it went over some longer bits of grass, I think some of the rear wheels slipped a bit, which knocked it a little bit offline. And then about a meter or two later, the GPS pulled the lawnmower perfectly back online. 
But what that leaves you with is a little tuft of long grass in the middle of the perfectly mown lawn just sticking out, obviously having been missed. The way that I fix this is in the app, you can actually set it to any time it mows the zone, go over it twice, which because it's automatic doesn't cost you any extra time. And because this has so much battery life, it's not even an issue. And then going over everything twice leaves you with a much more even, much neater lawn. But it did take me a while to work out that that's what I should do. Now I'll talk about my most unexpected benefit from owning this and why I think it's an experiential good. And then I'll give you my recommendations on who I think should consider getting one and who I think should probably avoid them. Now, after I've been owning this, what I have been most blown away by is when you have a device that can do 80% of a chore for you, 80% of looking after the lawn, how motivating that is to get that other 20% looking incredible. Since starting the channel and becoming a dad, I've just been so busy, I've been really struggling to get out and look after the aesthetics of my yard. But having something automatically get a lot of it looking really good and taking down the entire time of maybe a couple hours of looking after everything, probably an hour or hour and a half, mowing all the lawn and then another 20 minutes probably doing all the edging and another 20 like 10 or 20 minutes doing the weeding when it takes that whole two or two and a half hour per week process down to 20 minutes a week and then maybe an extra 20 minutes a month to do some weeding to get your yard looking nearly a hundred percent that's so motivating and in fact i have found that just because i now have this part done i've been reusing that time to improve other parts of the yard. I'm finally getting my backyard orchard food forest project properly underway because I now look at that particularly ugly part of the yard and I'm much more motivated to do, to do that because this looks so good. It's blown me away by having such a small change done to how much it just motivates me to get out and look after the rest of my yard. So who should buy it and who shouldn't? Well, let's start by addressing, could you get away with owning one of these as your only lawn care device? No, you couldn't because you still need something to take care of the edges. Could you get away with owning just one of these and a whippersnipper or another way to take care of your edges? Yeah, you probably could as long as you have someone to do that first knock back of grass or you have access to borrow a lawnmower in case you ever go away on a holiday and then come back and you need to do another just pass of really long grass, then yeah, you probably could. So then who shouldn't buy one of these? Well, if you have a very small yard, you're not getting much use out of it. If you have a yard that is mostly edges or your yard is mostly long and narrow and close to buildings, because it really wants to stay away from those walls, it's not actually going to be able to cut that much of your yard. Like I'll show the part of my lawn that's runs down the side of my house and it's about two meters wide and it only manages to get about the middle 50 or 60 percent of that and i still need to do one or two passes with the lawnmower to look after that particularly awkward part of the yard that really just plays into the weaknesses of one of these well then who should get one or consider getting one well if you have a large and open yard you'll be getting the most value out of one of these. Or if you're someone with about 100 square meters or more of lawn space and you value getting back a couple hours a week or you're willing to put that $1,000 plus price tag on just always having a perfectly mown lawn and you're willing to spend over $1,000 on getting that, then these are really worth considering. If you're someone who's also bought a robot lawnmower in the last couple of years, can you please let me know in the comments what your experience has been like with them, especially if you've bought a different brand so that we can help other people decide if these are right for them or not. If you're interested in checking out this particular model, I'll just put a link in the description. If you want to see more gardening product reviews, check out this video where I test out over 30 cheap ones from Temu. If you haven't done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and leaving this video a green thumbs up. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.